John here guys and today we're talking about the most powerful stack I've ever tested on this channel the new Diatone Mamba race stack this is the seven and it introduces a number of unique design features that we've never seen on any other ESC stack combo before. And this is my main race quad for 2021 season. Yes, it's running DJI. Look at its nice red colorway. These are the X Nova Lightning V2 motors. Now these are essentially what would eventually become the heads up 533 motor. Now the heads up motor essentially reduce the weight further by five grams but this has just the same amount of power and I'm gonna be pushing this thing hard now the reason why I wanted an unkillable stack was I managed to kill three stacks on this thing in 30 days part of that had to do with the wet track that we had the other day when heads up and chief and fat kid were all down part of it had to do with me experimenting with Freedom Spec. Now, once you've flown a few packs on Freedom Spec, pushing your throttle, full throttle, most of the time around the track, and then you go and fly a regular success quad, it gives you an unnatural sense of confidence. Now, Yvonne warned me before I flew my first success pack, but I didn't listen and I sent it anyway. And my muscle memory from the past several packs had been to push full throttle, and I just destroyed a stack in one hit now the stack that i destroyed was a very expensive holy bro kakute hd and what i did was i hit was i broke the connector off it broke a wire off and it shorted everything out so it probably would have survived if i didn't try to cram a 30 by 30 stack into a pod that was only meant for 20 by 20 <coughs> but i needed the power and i needed the protection and now we finally have something that's more powerful with a smaller footprint. Now this thing has one of the most unique mounting you've ever seen. Look at the heat sink that covers the entire board. That means that you don't have four M3 holes going through the ESC. That means you can have a better layout. Look at the pads on this thing. Each motor pad is about the same size as a power lead pad on a normal ESC. And I'm talking about a full size 30 by 30 ESC they're that big <laughs> anybody can become a professional looking builder because these pads are just so big and so easy to solder onto speaking of that the heat sink that runs all the way along the bottom and the top really absorbs a ton of heat I soldered this thing up very quickly just to see how hot it would get and that heat sink was cooking so it will absolutely extract all the heat out of this ESC as you're running it now one of the interesting features of this thing is there are little threaded inserts on the bottom of the ESC that you can switch out. It comes with two sets. That means that you can mount this thing to the bottom of your bottom plate with either M2 or M3 screws. You just swap the inserts. It's so easy. This frame uses M3, so I swapped it to M3, but I could have easily done M2, and it's the only stack I know on the market that allows you to comfortably do that. Speaking of that, that means that your screws are not going through the entire stack. You see this screw, this steel screw? This was in that Kakute that I hit so hard. And that is well known to be an almost unkillable combo. But because I put so much shock on the board, enough to actually bend this screw, I actually messed up some of the chips by eliminating a single screw that's running that tall. On the underside of this mount, there's a little vibration dampener on the ESC. And by reducing how these things fit together, you're having dampening on different layers. That allows your flight controller to be completely dampened and it allows an impacts for it to take a more staggered hit and not have all the pressure on a single point running through the entire thing. The flight controller mounts on some gummies and it screws into M2 screws on the top of that ESC heatsink. 
So you end up with something that is incredibly easy to build, incredibly easy to mount. I know for me, a lot of times it's a struggle finding the right size screw for a particular frame. Sometimes these things come with hardware, sometimes they don't. And even if they do, the screws that they include may be too long or too short, depending on the size frame you want to do. This takes all of that out of the equation. You can use very short screws to mount the ESC, and you can use the included M2 screws to mount the flight controller, and the build ends up being a joy. This was one of the easiest and fastest builds I've done in quite a while. The pads on this Mamba V3 flight controller F7 board are just so easy to solder to. My goodness, this thing almost built itself. Now, the only downside is they are a little bit expensive. The top of the line one is 115 bucks. That's the one I'm running here. I also got one on the way of the 60 amp version. I think for most purposes, that's going to be fine. So you can save 20 bucks, spend 95 bucks. I think that's going to be the ticket for most people. Now, because of the chip shortage, prices for stacks across the board are going to be increasing to this level very soon. So it seems like an expensive option, but very soon that's going to be the normal price. So stock up on these before the price of everything goes up. And I think this is really going to be the ticket. I've been using Mamba stacks on my racing freestyle. It's my most used stack all around. And this one is finally one that I can comfortably use racing. I've actually been racing on the smaller 40 amp ESC and it lasted me almost all last season, but I did break two of them because of the water and I've been wanting a little bit more protection, a little bit more headroom. I've been really practicing and wanting to go faster, and I wasn't sure if that 40 amp was gonna be able to carry me through the weight of these heavy HD builds crashing at 100 miles an hour into gates. Now I don't have to worry about that. My first few packs on this have been absolutely glorious. You know who else has been running this thing? The Chief. The Chief was down and he was quoted to say that his quad absolutely eats on this thing. It's eating brother. out there, brother. That's all I know. My quad's eating. Exactly. So, he has this stack on his Freedom Spec build. He's currently ranked fifth in the world on the multi GB global leaderboards. So, if you don't want to take my word for it, take his word for it. What do you think in the comments? What is the stack that you're running for 2021? Are you still on 30 by 30? Have you gone to 20 by 20? A lot of the new racing frames like the Switchback Pro are offering 20 by 20 only. So we need powerful options like this to be able to run for racing. And pretty much what I found is if it can hold up to racers, it can absolutely hold up to freestylers. Um, racers tend to crash a little more, a little harder. So if it lasts for us, it will last for anyone. And I can't believe we finally have something of this size that's the most powerful thing on the market. Very impressive diatome. Thanks guys.